Hello everyone, Fru here. Welcome to the channel. I am excited. I am stoked about the lecture we have for today because we're going to talk about time. Now, time might not be your favorite subject, but in the world in which we live today, in this global in interconnected world where you can take a plane from New York to uh, London in six hours and go across time zones and, and change times, uh, and businesses going global across the world, as data professionals, we're seeing the need to understand time uh, being very crucial. And I, I could submit that um, if I was a betting person and I was going to Las Vegas to make, to make a bet, I would submit that a lot of people, uh, especially the data engineers, the data architects that uh, are coming into the field and are paying attention to this. And this is one of those topics that you should be paying attention to this if you're going to work with data or an architect or a leader uh, in this space, just given the nature of businesses today. So time zones and uh, st uh, the standards that exist in this space, uh, UTC being a big one of them. My goal is to unpack all of this in this lecture uh, and to motivate, to provide the motivation to say, hey, if you haven't been paying attention to time and time zones and the time format, and you are working for businesses that are becoming increasingly global, this is something that you want to pay attention to. Um, depending on the, the data system you're working with, the, the type of database you're working with, sooner or later, you're going to come crashing with time. And an executive is going to want to look at the report. And that report was generated in London, but you are sitting in a time zone somewhere in mountain time in the US, and how do you reconcile those dates? So that's a little bit of my motivation going into this. Now, before we go in, I think we're going to be very fortunate today because I'm going to attempt a dad joke about time. So let's uh, let's see what the joke is about before we, we dive right in. So here's the question for us. Why did the scientist uh, drop a wristwatch into his flask? So why did the scientist drop a wrist watch into his flask? Well, he was looking for a very timely solution. All right, so there you go. My little uh, dad joke for, for us today to talk about time. So we're going to dive in today in, in this lecture. There are a couple of things that we're going to cover. We're going to talk about time zones uh, and why and the motivation behind that. This might be a refresher for a lot of folks. If you understand time zones and, and why this is relevant, that's fine. But we're going to talk about that. Then we're going to go in to look at the UTC uh, time uh, format, which is kind of the industry standard for representing time in computation or in just businesses today. And then we're going to look at certain uh, standards around that, like ISO 8, uh, uh, 8601 and uh, how this is implemented within databases. So this is going to be a pack full lecture. You definitely want to uh, watch to the end, even if there are going to be refreshers as we go through but you definitely want to watch this uh, lecture to the end. I think it's going to be a very powerful uh, and exciting uh, lecture for us. So to start, we're going to start talking about uh, the very first concept here. Let's number that one, which is time zones. Now, time zones is probably a refresher for a lot of us, right? And I, I was fortunate to uh, get a, a diagram here for us uh, to bring this onto the screen, which is, uh, something that we might be familiar with. So, th so this is um, uh, a representation of the world, right? You have uh, the U.S. somewhere here. You have uh, Africa here, Cameroon. You have all the way to Russia. And if you think about how big and complex the world is, if I am sitting somewhere here in the U.S. and you ask me for the time and I give you my time, just by the nature of the way the world, the, the earth revolves around the sun and where it could be morning here and it could be evening somewhere here in Shanghai, uh, in, in China. By its very nature, time is, is different to different places. And this, this challenge has been a challenge that people knew about this long time ago, We're talking about the 1700s, the 1800s, even before that with ships and going across the world and realizing that by the time you leave uh, London and you, you reach a, a port, say, in Portugal, or you reach uh, to the Americas, when people started coming to the Americas, now you're coming to a different time zone and trying to coordinate all of that was just a big, big pain. 
And so somewhere around, I believe it was the 1800s or so, uh, people started thinking, let's have a, a, a standard for, for coordinating time, for putting times together. And, and, and they came up with a standard which we're going to talk about, which is the UTC. But before the UTC, uh, the way time was represented was basically taking the globe, as you can see here, and breaking that into uh, into um, uh, meridians. So if you think about the globe, there are, let, let's just actually go up here and visualize this. So if you have a globe like this, right, which we kind of used to the round globe. Now, what they did was they, they said, all right, we're going to take uh, just an abstract middle line here. And we're going to call this, well, I don't really want that to be an arrow, but it's making it into an arrow. We're going to call this the prime meridian. And then from within the, from outside of that prime meridian, so outside of that, here, we're going to draw this. So these are longitudes, right? So if you think about your globe from, uh, from early on in school, the, the, the longitudes go from north to south and latitude go from east to west. So if you think about the longitudes, um, they, they kind of, in, these are arbitrary lines, these are um, virtual lines that are uh, encompass the globe. So they go from north to south. And what they did was they said, all right, the very first longitude in here, so this red one would be called the prime meridian. Let me make sure we actually write that. I think it's, it's important to, to spell it out so we can all see that so that very first longitude is the prime meridian right and i'm going to draw it before we come down and, and look at it on the board okay so we have the prime meridian being the very first longitude so if you think about it as zero and it so happened that uh this is uh somewhere in um in in england somewhere in england gmt which is uh greenish which is greenish, even though there's a W there, you don't pronounce it W. Greenish mean time. All right. And this is the Royal Observatory. So the Royal Observatory in uh, in Greenish, which is somewhere in the in the UK. Which is in Greenish. All right. So again, just to kind of recap this, there is a prime meridian. And then from there, every so let's zoom in here let's uh let's zoom in so let's just zoom in into a globe here for a second and dissect this and, and unpack this a little bit so we have our prime meridian now what these folks also did was they say hey if this is zero from the prime meridian every 15 degree right 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, you name it, going outwards, the, the longitude at that point is going to be called a meridian. So that's basically what a meridian is. So if you think about going outwards, every 15 degrees, we have a meridian. Let's uh, reduce the size of the pen. So we have a meridian. Every 15 degrees, we have a meridian. All right. So now, if we start from the zero and we're going this direction, and what's this direction? This direction is east. And what is this direction? This direction is west. So every, uh, from the prime meridian, we're going east, we're adding 15 degrees uh, by longitude. And if we're going west, we'll, we'll still have 15 degrees going west. 30, 45, all the way to 180, right? If you think about 180 going this way and 180 going this way, it all makes, what, 360, which is a, a full circle, which is a globe. All right. Now, with that said, uh, what they also did was they said, hey, if we're going east, by every 15 degrees, we're going to gain an hour of time. So this is plus one. This is plus two, plus three, all the way to uh, 12. 
and if we go in ways, this is going to be minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, all the way to minus 11, going uh, west. All right. So if you think about it, this is basically the globe. So if for me, being in the in the U.S., so the U.S. is somewhere, I know this is the, the prime meridian, where London is somewhere close to somewhere in England. The U.S. has to be west of that, right? So if you think about the west, so the U.S. is going to be west of that. So it's going to be somewhere, uh, somewhere here. I'm just being hypothetical. All right. So somewhere here. And even within the U.S., the U.S. is massive. It's massive. And the U.S. has different time zones. So if you think about it, there is an eastern time zone and you, you go more west. You have the central time zone. You go more west. You have the mountain time zone and you go more. You have the Pacific time zone. All right. So you can start seeing how complicated this is getting. Not only do we have um, the greenish time, the greenish time, we have separate time zones depending on what meridian you fall in, what what longitude you fall in, in in the globe. So if you ask for somebody in the US what time it is, and they tell you the time is say uh, eleven a.m. Well, what what exactly does 11 a.m. mean? Is it 11 a.m. here or 11 a.m. here or 11 a.m. there? It, it just doesn't make sense. If I just say, what time is it? You tell me 11 a.m. It doesn't help. So if you say 11 a.m. Uh, CST, then we know that you're talking about Central Standard Time. All right. But then what about Central Daylight Time, which the U.S. also has? So there is just a lot of complication and just complete uh it just gets really complicated pretty fast. So if you're working with databases, you have a sale transaction that happens from your, your internationally global company. And somewhere in the database, there is an entry of a sale happen on December 25th at 11 a.m. Uh, well, what is 11 a.m.? Is it 11 a.m. your time in Pakistan or your time in, in China? Or is it 11 a.m. over here, right? So now you have to specify the local time, which is the the, the the time zone, so CST. And now you have all these different time zones around the world. It just becomes really, really, really difficult to get a handle around this. And this is a, a, a big problem that has uh, affected computer systems for, for a while. Not just computer systems, but if you think about international commerce, everybody gets uh, suffers from from the deficiencies of this of this system all right so this is the the globe that we we looked at uh it's just a, 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 a more flattened representation of what we saw above where you have um the greenish which is kind of the center zero and then as you go we're adding time we're adding time going to your uh, going east and as we go west we're losing time so you're seeing the minus we're losing and then each of this is 15 degrees and these are the meridians. So this is a meridian. Now, greenish here in the middle is the prime meridian. So somewhere in uh, that observatory in 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 in, uh, in greenish, which is in I believe it's in England, or would you say it's in the United Kingdom somewhere, right? Uh, somewhere there there is a clock, and that clock is whatever that clock says is the the time that is the greenish time. So. Uh, this is a challenge. It's just trying to keep track of all these different time zones. The U.S. alone has four time zones. Uh, Russia has about seven time zones. China, maybe eight. I don't know if that's... No, that's not actually the number of time zones. But the, the Russia definitely has a lot of time zones, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So it's, it's a lot of time zones to, to keep track of. So this is a little bit of the background and the motivation behind time zones uh, for us and and why it becomes, it was a challenge, why this was a big challenge. Now, let's, let's look at what the solution to this is. The solution for this is where, and we're going to go now into two here, where UTC comes into play. So this is where UTC comes into play. Now, what is UTC? If... You understand English and you speak English or making this video talking English. UTC uh, basically stands for, <laughs> and this will surprise people when we, when we say this, it stands for Coordinated Universal 
so coordinated universal time. All right. And the whole goal for this is to bring together a consistent, coordinated way to represent time. So wherever you are, if I ask for the time and you give me the time in UTC, I'll know exactly what time it is and there's going to be no ambiguity. That's really what you, uh, UTC was, was meant. So um, now going into why I would look at UTC and you start seeing coordinated universal time, it's just really uh, trying to, it's just down to history, right? Where if you can imagine, the moment you start trying to coordinate things among different countries, different languages, especially with the Anglos and the Francophones and the, the, the English, would, you would imagine this would be universal time coordinated, but it, that's not what it is, right? It's coordinated universal time because universal time coordinated doesn't make any sense. So coordinated uh, universal time is what it is. But guess what? Coordinated universal time is, if I were to... If I were to uh, abbreviate, uh, put this in abbreviation, what would that be? That would be something like CUT, all right? But that's not what, what UTC is. And the whole idea behind this is because the English, uh, Ang the Anglos, uh, had it as uh, the coordinated universal time. And the French, um, just given how French is written a little bit differently, in French is tang, and this is me trying to pronounce French here, French used to be my second language for a while. So, Tan Universal, uh, I believe is uh, something like this with an accent thank you. All right. So, the French would have it as Tan Universal uh, Cordon with this accent. Um, that's how they pronounce it in French, right? And be just because French is written a little bit differently. But guess what? If you abbreviate this, you have something like, like this. All right. So as a compromise, <laughs> as a compromise, there always has to be compromises, right? They come, they came up with you with UTC just to not piece of the French, not to piece of the English. At least that's the history I've I've gotten about how it came up to being UTC. So UTC doesn't stand for Universal Time Coordinated. It's sometimes I catch myself saying that, but really it's not that. It. It's Coordinated Universal Time, and that's uh, really uh, the history. Uh, what that means is. Uh, because there is a standard uh, with UTC, um, if you ask the time for somebody, let's say that person was in in uh, in New York. It's, uh, let's go back. Let's say somebody was in New York, which is in the United States, and you they ask for the time. The time in New York, according to UTC, would be equals to the UTC time minus 5. So UTC simply standardizes the time um, according to this prime meridian here in Greenwich. Um, and it, it replaces the, GM, the GMT, uh, Greenwich Mean Time. And I'm not going to go into that, but just, just, just know that uh, here it standardizes the time here in UTC. And every time, if you ask for a time in any um, in any meridian or in any time zone, you're basically taking that time in reference to UTC. So uh, if you're in New York, so New York would be somewhere here. So this would be UTC minus five. And that's how we came up with the time in New York being UTC minus minus five. All right. So um, and we're going to explain the standard a little bit more, how you, you represent the time in, in UTC. So. Just knowing that UTC is standardized, so there's this standard time here, and then wherever you are in the, in your time zone, we're basically taking, we're basically giving the local time, but also specifying its variance, its offset to the UTC, and that's what the the this uh, UTC uh, helped. And UTC because it's here in in Greenwich, the military. There's just a little bit more, a little bit more background to this. The military had the, a, a way of labeling the different uh, time zones and it so happened that the letter they get for this time zone here where uh, the the greenish is was letter Z so the uh, I think they gave different letters to the different time zones so a I don't know the exact le letters they gave to the different time zones all I know is that uh, this this uh, one here in uh, greenish was letter Z so you often hear it uh, called uh, Zulu because uh in the military, they, they use uh, 
words to when you're spelling out specific letters. So, for exa- example, alpha uh, would be A or Bravo or B or Charlie, C, right? Or Delta is D. Uh, so when the speaking is very clear. So if it's Z, you say Zulu. So Zulu time. And pilots and uh, sailors uh, use the Zulu time a lot. So what does Zulu time just uh, re- refer to? It's simply saying this time is uh, the Greenwich time. This is a UTC with an offset of zero, the starting point. And then from there, you can either add or subtract based on if you're going east, you're adding, you're going west, you're subtracting. So let's uh, let's actually go in and, and look at some examples of why uh, this UTC becomes uh, very relevant. And then we'll also give you some some examples of UTC time so that it's, it's more concrete than the abstract uh, um, discussion we've had so far. So let's uh, let's go in into point number three here that we're going to cover uh, here in the lecture. And uh, the point that we want to cover, uh, we're going to cover here is the challenge, the challenge of representing date format when communicating. So let's talk about date uh, formats. And that's what we're going to talk about now. So let me, for example, give three different date formats. So, uh, and you can see if you understand what, what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to write a date, 0103 as an example, uh, 2020. All right. I'm sure some people might read this as January 3rd, 2020. Or some people might read it as uh, March 1st, 2020, right? You can still see how this is confusing. Now, if I do something like 301 uh, 2020 uh, or 2020 01 03 or 2020, right, 03 01. Depending on what country you come from, this means different things to you. So if I'm looking at the database and it has a date and I see this, and I am from the UK or from the Anglo side of the world, where well, they tend to have the month, where well, they tend to have the, 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 the they tend to have it as a day, a month, and year in the Anglo side of the world, right? Anglo Saxons. But in the US, it tends to be month and day and year. So there's there is a lot of confusion. Just seeing a, a string like this. You be you be amazed that different folks interpret it differently, but if you are doing business or you're doing some some really serious analytics, this could be uh, this could be a showstopper. All right, so making sure that when somebody writes a date that we all are referring to the same thing is you can imagine that this is a where uh, somebody would come up and say, "Let's create a standard around this." All right. And if you're thinking that somebody's going to come up to say, let's create a standard around this, you're right, because some people did. And this is where uh, the standard for date formats come into play. And we're going to put this as point number four that we're going to touch on here. So we, we've seen the challenge. So now there is a standard for date and time. Right. So the standard for date and time, and this is by the International Standard Organization, and the specific, uh, specification they have here is 8601. And you can go read up about this, where it talks about how you represent uh, date and time so that nobody, this confusion we're seeing here, doesn't exist. And this built into, this ISO built into, if you represent date and time, it accommodates for the UTC. And so this is where we're building all of this together. All right. So the International Standard Organization, ISO, uh, came up with this specification, 18, uh, um, 8601. And it tells you exactly how uh, time and date all should be represented. And if you repre- represent it that way, no one is going to be confused when you see it. And so what is that specification? It says, all right, if we're dealing with, um, if we're dealing with uh, a date, it has a very specific format how we're going to represent that date. The date will be represented as year hyphen month hyphen and day so there is no confusion there's no ambiguity 
So if I were to give you, and you can you can use it with hyphen or without hyphen, depending on on the situation, it's gonna be okay. But it has to be year, month, day, no ambiguity. So let's take for example a date of twenty twenty two, and we had the one above o three o one. If you saw this or you saw twenty twenty two dash o three dash o one, now everybody would understand what this is. Because there's no confusion if this is month or day or day or month. There's no confusion. We know this is a year, month, day. All right. And so that's the specification within the, the ISO 8601. So no one confuses that. Now, there's the second piece of this is, and this, this the, the, the date one was more really important to get a handle around and get a, a definition because that, that was the one with the most confusion. The second one, which is time. How we how we specify time or how we write time is um, something that was also as part of that specification, and in that specification, time is written as hours. So you start with hours. So if you think about time, is you 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 don't care about the date at that point. You're looking more at the hours. And uh, after hours, what do we have? We have a colon, and this is important. We have seconds. Well. I think there's there's something after the hours, right? Not seconds. And I think I'm uh, missing something there. So we we'll, we'll want to have minutes, right? And then we have um, so hours, minutes, and then we we can go into seconds, all right? But it doesn't stop there. There there could be milliseconds. There could be stuff after that. So now we have a full stop, and then at this point we have. The, the the remaining uh milliseconds or whatever comes uh, after this all right so this is how time is represented now what this means is if i uh if i were to write something like 0 3 uh 24 30 would this confuse anybody for most people it wouldn't confuse because we're already used to this this is kind of common Right, we intuitively, if it's, I'm talking about time and I'm writing this, I don't think anyone will, will look at this as uh, 24 uh, hour and three minutes and 30 seconds. There's no way you confuse that, right? For I would assume that most people wouldn't confuse that. Uh, we all would most because it's very common to know this is the three is for the hour, and the the, the 24 is a minute, and the 30 is a second because it's a little bit uh, common. But the specification still calls it out. Right, so uh, if you are writing time in ISO, this will be it starts with hour, minute, second, and then millisecond. This is kind of optional, depending on the precision that you wanna. Uh, uh, if you need milliseconds, not every situation uh, needs uh, milliseconds. So, uh, depending on on uh, on on your needs, you can either uh, do that or not. So bringing this all together if we were to bring this all together uh what the specification has done for us is it showed us how to do let me go to point number five here that we're going to be touching on it showed us how to do uh, how to write time and how to write date and so what this has uh, provided is especially for 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 database systems or systems that store data and work with it uh, it's allowed us to create a, a, a number of data types. So let's write now uh, the, the different uh, data types that uh, different systems now would implement as a result of this. So number one is we can specify a date in the database. Because of this, we can sp specify a date time data type in the database, similar to the way we have integers and strings and, and varchars and all of that. For dates, we can specify this new data. This uh, well, they're not new, but we can in the database. You can see I'm gonna create a column with a date a data type or with a date time data type. And if it's a date time, we have a way we can specify that, right? And then after that, we have uh, a time uh, data type. You can also specify a timestamp uh, data type. Right, so different databases would, would implement this. And basically, the way we we'll look at this is, let me go to a different color here, and we're gonna use red. Basically, this is basically uh, date plus 
time, right? So date time is basically date plus time. Uh, time is pretty straightforward. We know how to specify that above. And this is optional. We can also put a precision here. So you can put a precision of maybe three, nine, four to specify the milliseconds or not. And then also the timestamp, which uh, is optional where we can put the precision here, like uh, let's say precision up to nine, or we can specify if, again, depending on your database, if it's a, a, a timestamp that has um, that have a, a local time zone or if it has a, a no time zone or if it has a time zone, so TZ, right? So there, there are a lot of data types that we can implement in a database. And what this allows for us to do in aggregate is in a database, I can now specify time. I can bring this all together to write time in a way that is very unambiguous. Anyone can pick this and read it wherever you are, and it's going to make uh, sense to, to you and to the database and to everybody. So the confusion we saw earlier is not going to exist. And so what this is going to do is point number six here is now, if uh, going to what the UTC says, I can write a time in UTC. Uh, let's, uh, let's cancel this. So I can write a time in a very unambiguous way in UTC as year. And let's zoom in here for a second. Uh, let's uh, cancel this take. So we can go as year. Again, very straightforward. We'll have to hyphen month. Very straightforward. Hyphen day. And this is very straightforward. Now, we leave a space here, and then we can specify the time. So the time would be H, which is the hour. Now, the delimiter for that is uh, semicolon or is, is colon, minute, colon, seconds. Okay. And then if we want, we can specify um, the, the precision of that. So milliseconds after that. So we can put that in, in S, all right? And then if we also want, we can then add the time zone. So I'm going to put that in red. So I'm going to put so, uh, two things here in red. I'm going to put T here, and I'm going to put time zone uh, uh, here, designation here, TZD. All right, so in, in, in summary, this is what a UTC time format would look like. If you see a time format that looks like this, you're definitely looking at the UTC. Now, let me uh, give an example. If you're working with, with the database and you're looking at UTC time, let's write a specific uh, time in UTC and see how it all comes together with this. So if I write something like 2022 uh, here and the month is seven, right? And the day is what, 16? Now, that is just the date part. So here, we're looking just at the date part. I can stop with that, and that's fine. All right. But if I want to specify date time, which is, so this is just the date part. Now, if I want to do date time, I can uh, specify the time part. I can now add the time part to this. And so here, we have either you just leave a blank space or you specify T. The database is going to do that for you. And then now we have the time part, right? So the time now could be, uh, let's say this could be 19. And 19, we're looking at military time. So we're looking at the 24-hour clock. We're not just looking at a.m. p.m. It doesn't exist. So you're going from uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, all the way to 24, right? So we're looking at the, the military time. So 19, um, and then the, so that's our hour. And then what would the minute be? The minute will be, uh, let's say the minute is 20. Uh, we can specify a second if we want, right? And that second could be, uh, 15. All right, we can stop there. But what if we want to add the the precision? What we, if we want to add this optional precision that we've specified here? It's optional. But if you want to add that, now we can add a, 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 a full stop here. And then we can add the precision. So we can add, say, 18, 9. And this is just the precision, the milliseconds after that. All right. Again, it's optional. A lot of many use cases, you're not going to be going you're not going to be going down to this kind of precision. But if you're doing time series or you're doing kind of financial trading where you're generating lots of data, there might be situations where you can 
and you might need this precision, not just three, but you can go all the way to nine of that precision, uh, depending on your use case. All right, we can stop there. We can stop there. And now we have a date and we have a time with a really good precision specified. But but what if well, we're missing something? We're missing this TZD here, this uh, time zone designation. If I just give you this time as such, is this time my local time or what time is it, right? So uh, it, it's not very helpful, especially when we're talking about UTC, uh, to just have the time like this. This is where the UTC designation comes into play. And with this one, now we give the time in the local time. And then as part of it, let's go to red. We also include the UTC uh, offset. So if I do say zero, uh, five, right? So the UTC offset in, uh, in hours and in minutes. So this is hours and then, um, uh, uh, um, minutes. Well, it's always going to be an hour, right? Because the, the time zone is always you going hour increment. So the minutes of course will always be zero. Uh, but it, there is still a space for that for us to specify. All right. So looking at this now, this is what a complete time in UTC would look like. And guess what? This is an offset of, uh, well, that's plus five. So this is plus five. So if, if I'm looking at, uh, if I go back into, into this, uh, into, if we go back into, into a diagram, again, we're starting here and we go plus five. This will be a time from, or one, two, three, four, five. So this would be time somewhere in India. All right. India has a couple of different time zones, but it's going to be this time zone in India that this time would be for. What if, what if I was specifying this time and I did it instead of doing plus five, we did it as, let's take the pen. We did it as minus five. Can you guess what time we're representing as this? This will be New York because before above we talked about New York being UTC minus five. All right, so so let's go back here zero one two three four five, and if we go above somewhere there is uh is New York. All right, so th that's the East Coast, the Eastern time of uh, of the US. So this will be the time in in uh, uh, in New York uh, as well. So this is how we represent uh, time in uh, in UTC. Now let's let's look at some some more examples. Uh, what we've seen here is we can specify the the time zone designation in positive or negative depending on if we're east or west of um, of of Zulu. All right. So what if I'm in Zulu? What if I'm in, in Greenwich and I want to specify the time? And what we're gonna do there would be twenty. Let's do twenty two, oh seven, sixteen, t. So now I'm specifying my time, 19, 20, 15, 189. If I'm in Zulu, I can just write Z as such without any offset because there's no offset, right? If I'm if I'm dead center in, in, in uh, Greenish, then there's no offset for me. Now, depending on, on where, again, your time zone is, then you you put in the offset accordingly. So th this makes it very consistent. If somebody just gives you a time stamp or a, a time and it's in UTC format, you know exactly where it is. There's no ambiguity. Uh, the daylight savings, all of that doesn't even come into play because Z uh, Zulu time, th there's no daylight savings there. All right. So if, say, you are in, uh, in New York and New York hits uh, daylight savings, well, instead of minus five, it's going to be minus... It's going to be minus 04, right? And you still will know exactly what what uh, what that time is. Uh, uh, it's still going to be consistent. All right. So let's just write one more here. Uh, 20, 22, 07, uh, 16, T, 19, uh, 20, uh, 15, 189 now instead of zulu which is it means there's no offset we want to put an offset there let's do minus uh so five six seven let's do minus uh seven actually minus six let's do minus six oh zero 
all right what time is it what what if i if i were to provide this time in what um time zone is this coming from again minus 06 from zulu you know if you go back up uh here is we're starting from here zulu one two three four five six puts us somewhere in uh central uh united states so chicago minneapolis all of that will fall into the central time zone all the way to to Dallas, Texas, and uh, coming down to uh, coming down to some parts of uh, Central America, there they all fall in that Central Time Zone. So pretty, pretty consistent. If you pick up a time like this, um, uh, written in UTC format, uh, there's no ambiguity there. Don't forget, there's always this offset. There has to be this offset. Then there is a uh, the offset for the time zone designation T uh, T Z D. There is the time. Uh, itself the time specification which again is in the clear format of hour minute seconds and the the, the milliseconds if there is any milliseconds of of that up to nine precisions and then you have your date which is in the format of year month date it has to be in this format. it has to be this consistent all right so we have our dates we have our time and we have the offset and this is what makes uh utc uh very very um uh very very consistent so if you're building applications let's just kind of bring this home uh if you're building applications this is something that you want to be very careful about as you're writing data into your applications uh or you're creating data types and you're creating a a column of date data type what kind of values are you injecting into that into that column right so if you go ahead let's just put a, a bullet point here number seven to talk about things to be careful about so if i were to go ahead and i do something like 03 uh 01 uh, 2021 so this is my string or 2022 i want to insert into a column which is of date data type right i can do something like this well would this make sense well a lot of database engines have ways of interpreting this, but you're not guaranteed that this will always be interpreted. Okay, there's no guarantee that this will always be interpreted because somebody might write something like this, 2022, all right? Somebody might write something like zero, uh, uh, three. Instead of the slashes, they might do gen, comma, 2022. So you really, really, really have to be careful uh, on how you... Uh, uh, format your data uh, before putting it into data types that are of of a date type. So this will make sense. The, the database engine should interpret this. Why? Because this is UTC, it's UTC compliant. But all of this are not. So you have to really think about how you're structuring your data uh, to put it into into uh, into your data database of of data types. Then if I if I was loading a time if i created a column of time or timestamp and i i do something like 03 uh 24 and let's do 11 right many people will understand this the database will understand this this is hour minute second but if i were to go ahead and do something like oh well let's do zero uh um let's do this let's do 50 51 and we we did 51 slash 11 slash 06 well this you can start seeing that this doesn't make a lot of sense right because i don't think anyone's going to interpret this as time well what time is it is this 11 hour and 51 minutes and six seconds you, there's really no way to interpret this so if you start loading data into uh, a time so let's write time here and we write date if you start loading data in this format, let's say you have a string of this of this nature, and you try to load it into a time data type, a field of time data type, this you, if the database is worth its, its weight, it's going to complain and say this is not allowed, right? Or you're going to run into issues. But if you put it in this format, which is UTC compliant format, right, which is according to the ISO, uh, ISO 8601, uh, then it should work. So... If you're working with database and you and and you start dealing with date times issues and you're running into issues, you probably want to step back and say, "Hey, let me get my handle around this. What is my um, 
the local time are we using? Is this a distributed database that supports local time? Uh, does it support UTC? Uh, and how are we using the UTC for uh, for our global business? And having a consistent way of storing your dates. So uh, if if the if a sale happens in Mumbai versus a sale in Chicago, and you storing and these databases are in, in two different parts of the world, and you store them in their local UTC time. So well, not there's nothing as local UTC time. You store them in time in the UTC format. When you come to do your analysis at the end. It, it becomes a lot more easier versus um, if you just store it store that in some random format that is not UTC compliant, right? Because UTC they will always have the time which is local plus the offset to tell you uh, how to get to UTC. But if I just store just this piece, well, I don't know how to get to UTC, and you might run into issues. So something, something to think about, um, and just really, 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 really make sure you synthesize this and digest this. And just become familiar with it, right? There might be people walking around and hearing UTC and have no idea why UTC is. My hope is that this lecture, it's a long lecture. Uh, I love doing this and just having conversations and going deep has maybe unlocked things for you. Uh, and given the motivation to go and research and, and just understand a little bit more about this, right? This UTC, which is replacing GMT uh, and UTC uses atomic clocks and it is supposed to keep things more more relevant. There's a lot more details you can get into this. Um, now, not everybody should be understanding how atomic clocks work and, and how it affects the magnetic fields of the, of the planet. But in your own case, if you have to deal with this, I'm hof hopefully I've given you the motivation uh, to go out and to, um, to, to understand that. So just to recap, uh, what we've seen here is uh, we started uh, the, the lecture with talking about time zones and, and why they're relevant. Uh, really starting with the prime meridian uh, and, and every 15 degrees from there is a meridian. And we're adding one hour if we're going east, we're subtracting one hour if we're going west. And so the, the whole world has been divided into 24 of these different time zones. So depending on where you are on the globe, you're going to fall into one of these time zones. Now, keeping track of that was a, was a massive, was a massive challenge. Um, uh, given the GMT and uh, CST, Central Standard Time Zone, Mountain Time Zone, and across the world, there are just so many different time zones. There's really no way to coordinate that and have a consistent way. And so UTC uh, was created by the body, which is the ISO, International, International Standard Organization, came up with the UTC format for uh, specifying date and times in a way that everybody can understand it and speak a common language. And that format is year, month, day, year, month, date, or day, and time with a T. And this is optional. You can put the T or not, but it's fine. And then hour, minute, seconds. And there are mili positions after that, milliseconds, you specify that. And then the time zone designation. So the offset from, from Zulu time, which is basically greenish. If there is no, if, if you're looking just at Zulu and there is no offset, then you just put the Z. Otherwise, you put the... Uh, uh, you specify plus or minus what the, whatever the offset is, depending on if you go east or west. Now, if you store this in a database, anyone looking at this, trying to analyze it, should understand what this time is. There is no confusion. There is no ambiguity, like we see with situations like this, where uh, this could mean something different in Europe versus in, in, in the U.S. And so this solves a lot of problems. This solves a lot of problems. Now, the specific implementations and functions that are available to different database systems might be different. So MySQL versus Postgres versus Snowflake or some other database might have different implementations to this. So pay attention to the specific vendor or, or database you're working with. I know exactly how Snowflake does it, but if you're working with a different uh, database system for different use cases, you might want to pay attention to your specific database and make sure that... Uh, the problem you're trying to solve it could be solved by um, by the database. All right, guys. So there you have it. Uh, this has been through with another uh, lecture. Really excited. I, I promise I was very stoked about this lecture. Uh, hopefully, you found this valuable. Hopefully, I've given you some inspiration uh, to go out and to be more uh, informed and hopefully more timely uh, on this topic if somebody were to ask you about UTC or ISO or GMT and, and all the different time zones and time formats that are out there. Again, thank you for watching. I really appreciate all of you who watched to the end. Uh, that means a lot to me. I like this. Share this with somebody that might get value out of it. I have been through. 
and you have been very awesome and i'll see you in the next lecture